Good morning, committee, and welcome to any member of the, com of the public joining the 10th of September meeting of the Western and Southern Area Planning Committee, which is one of the three area-based planning committees of the Dorset Council. Our area of remit covers the previous Weymouth and Portland Borough Council and most of the previous West Dorset District Council area. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the council has had to put in place measures to enable the council's decision-making process to continue whilst keeping safe members of the public, councillors and council staff in accordance with the government's guidance on social distancing by applying new regulations for holding committee meetings from remote locations. Therefore, this meeting is being live streamed to the public and a copy of the recording will be available on the Council's website following this meeting. Members of the public are invited to make written representations provided they are submitted to the Democratic Service Services Officer no later than 8.30 a.m. on the Tuesday before the meeting. These representations will take the form of written statements and will be read out on your behalf at the committee meeting by our administration assistant. For the benefit of the public, I am David Shortell and I'm the chairman of this area planning committee. My vice chairman is Councillor Bill Pipe, which I understand at present is not with us. Other members of the committee are as follows. Councillor Mike Barron. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Councillor Dave Bowell. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dave. You might be on mute. Can't hear you. OK, I carry on. Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning, David. And good morning to David Bowell. <laughs> oh, hello, David. Sorry. That's quite all right. Councillor Susan Cocking. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Chair. Congratulations on your new, new, your new chairmanship. Thank you very much indeed, Susan. <laughs> I should wait until after the meeting, really. <laughs> Councillor Jean Danseth. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Chairman. Councillor Nick Arlen. Good morning, Nick. Chairman. It's Denise. I, I understand that Councillor Ireland is having problems accessing the meeting. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to call him now to bring him into the meeting, but it isn't working so far. OK, well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well, then I'll continue onwards. Councillor Louis O'Leary. Good morning, Louis. Good morning, Chairman. Uh, nice to hear from you. Councillor Kate Weller. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Chairman. Councillor Susan Williams. Good morning, Susan. Sarah Williams, good morning. Sarah. Good morning, David. <laughs> good morning, Sarah. And Councillor John Worth. Good morning, John. Good morning, David. We will bring in to the meeting at a later stage uh, uh, yeah, Councillor Nick Arnett, if we're able to get him connected. And also, of course, later uh, my Vice Chairman will be joining us, Councillor Bill Pipe. Um, for your information, a number of officers will also be involved during the meeting and these will be introduced at appropriate times. I would like to take this opportunity of thanking the previous chairman of the, uh, the uh, uh, Western and Southern Area Planning Committee, uh, Councillor Simon Christopher, for his hard work over the last year, and to his vice chairman, Councillor David Gray, who has also assisted him uh, uh, during that time. We will now follow the agenda set out on your information packs. Before I can start the agenda, may I advise the committee and members of the public that item 5B, and that is WDD 19001514, which is West Coombe, Smithops Lane, Lotus Bridport, has been deferred to a future date and will not be determined at this meeting. I mention this now to avoid anyone waiting uh, through the preliminaries uh, in order to speak on that particular uh, uh, application. We now go on to the agenda proper. I start off with item one on the agenda, agenda and that is to confirm any apologies. Chairman, I've received a, um, an apology from Councillor Bill Pipe. Mm -hmm. um, 
and also um, if Nick Ireland is unable to attend um, today's meeting, then I, I'll i note him, his name as an apology. Well, thank you, Liz. That's very, very kind. Now, hopefully they'll be able to join us at the Okay, well, we'll continue on in the agenda, and that is item two on the agenda, and that is declarations of interest. Does any member have any declarations of pecuniary or other conflict of interest, bias or predetermination regarding any item on this agenda? Uh, Chairman, can I uh, declare uh, an interest in the in the next item, the one from the Harbour Master's Office? It's a non-pecuniary interest, but I was the chairman of the Harbours Committee at the time that the application was made. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, that, that's been duly noted. Chairman, it's a non-pecuniary interest. I'm still a member of the Harbour Committee, um, but I have no interest in the uh, in the application. Thank you. Thank you. Ch Chairman. Chair. Chair. Chairman, it's Sarah Williams. Uh, I'm also a member of the Harvest Committee. I have not been involved in the application and come to it with an open mind. Thank you. You agreed to say something, Denise? No. Um, yes, sorry, Chairman. I, I didn't catch the name of the councillor who made a declaration um, prior to Councillor Williams. Oh. Oh, that was Louis O'Leary, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, Denise, it was, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry. Chairman, Chairman, it's it's Phil Crowther. Um in, in light of the declarations made by councillors Weller and O'Leary, um it would help, I think, if they were able to confirm in the same way that Council Williams did that that their um membership of the uh, Harbours Committee has meant has not meant that they've had any involvement with this application. Or that no, I've, I've, I've had you. no involvement in this application and I come to it with an open mind. Thank you. And Kate? And I've had no involvement and I come to this with an open mind as well. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. That clears up that particular um, point. Chair, okay. it's Chair, it's Councillor Susan Cockin. I've just asked to speak about de declaration of interest. Okay. On item Bumpers Lane, Portland. Can't remember what item it is now. Um, but when um, the affordable housing um, element on Bumpers Lane on Portland, I was on Portland Town Council at the time and objected to the planning application. So I'd already objected to the planning application, so I don't know whether Phil Crowther could give me some advice on um, would I need to not take part in that application? I now call on uh, uh, Philip Crowther, our solicitor, to, uh, to respond to that request. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Cocking, it's a, it's a question of whether you approached this application with an open mind because it's on a it's on a different topic to the principle of development, which you considered when you were. Uh, I assume you, when when you say you're on the camp, the town council and objected to the application, that was to the the application for the entire development. If yes. that's the case, this is a separate application, and um, you need to decide whether you're approaching this application with an open mind or not. If if you are approaching it with an open mind, you can take part. But if you think that um, that in in your objection to the principal decision that you, you've already effectively made your mind up about this, then then you shouldn't take part. So so that's the the question that you, you have to decide. And, and that's one for you. Thank you. I think I would have to say that I'd, I'm already predetermined and I haven't come with an open mind about it because I think it's very, yes, I've already made my mind up about it. So I, unfortunately, I have to be declare that I wouldn't be able to take part in it then. Okay, so isn't that fine? Uh, ch Chairman, uh, could I, could uh, this is Councillor Weller, could I come in on the same um, uh, application again, the Bumpers Lane? I was a member of Weymouth and Portland Borough Council's Planning Committee when that uh, application was made. Um, I, 
it's a long time ago and and I can say that I I would be looking at it with an open mind on this occasion. Thank you, thank you, Kate. That's uh, that covers that point. Chairman, just for Councillor Cocking's benefit and for um, in case there are any other members who who feel that they can't take part in a in an item, the the protocol for virtual meetings is for for you to turn your microphone and camera off for the entire item. So, so that you're not taking part. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. That's uh, that's uh, good advice. OK, right, I'll continue now to item three on the agenda. That's the minutes uh, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th and the 13th of August 2020. Has all members received a copy of those minutes? May I prove and sign those minutes as a true and accurate record of what then took place? Uh, Chairman, it's, it's Councillor Louis O'Leary here. Mm -hmm. On the meeting of the 12th of August, uh, yeah, 12th of August, um, I was in attendance in the beginning of the meeting and then had to leave due to the internet going, um, but it has me down as absent for the entire meeting. Right, can I bring in it? Denise on that particular point. Thank you. Chairman, um, uh, Councillor O'Leary's apologies were on the minutes in error, and so I can remove that. Thank um, you. I did speak to Democratic Services, and, and they said just to bring it up at the meeting. Yes, that's 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 correct. Thank you. OK, you're happy with that, uh, uh, Councillor O'Leary? Good. Yes, thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you. So I was, will sign those minutes when I'm next in the office. Agreed? Agreed. OK, item four on the agenda, and that's public participation. The committee has received a number of written representations submitted in accordance with revised protocol effective from the 20th of July 2020. That is the first three public statements received in objection and the first three in support, including the application and agent, will be read out by an officer not involved in the application. The number does not include representations received from town and parish councils or by Dorset councillors. We have four planning applications before us today for consideration. We also have one, have one application which has been deferred, as I'd already mentioned. Have there any, been any other requests for deferral or withdrawal, please? In that case, then I'll, concede, I'll continue with the planning application. The planning application 5A, which is WDD 20001009, that's a slight change to the actual number that's actually in the agenda, is the Harbour Masters compound, Harbour Masters Yard, Ozone Terrace, Lyme Regis, for the erection of Harbour Master and Fisherman's Store. I will now invite Joe Riley, a senior planning officer, to introduce this item. Over to you, Joe. Right, you can all hear me and see me, is that correct? Can you all hear me and see me? Yeah. Yes. Good. Right. Yes, okay. Thanks, Joe. Yes. Good. <laughs> I always worry. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this item, um, page down. That's it. The Harbour Masters Open Compound um, Storage Building and Fisherman Store. So the first plan I'm going to show you is the location plan. Um, this is um, Ozone Terrace up here to the north. Um, there's an electricity substation here and existing public toilets here. You've got the bowling green here to the um, left and there's also um, a building alongside um, Ozone Terrace, um, which is a bowling green building. So the proposal is for um, a store. Um, it would have uh, here it says fisherman store, toilets, storage area, and it's within the Harbour Masters compound. There's a wall around the compound at the moment. This is the compound area here. Um, that wall would remain. 
This is just a plan to show you again um, the location. So it's just here where it says public toilets. Um, and this was to put it into context um, that you've got a car parking area here. The cob goes down here and this is the harbour. Um, and you've got all this um, uh, paraphernalia parking harbour, general harbour workings in that area around there. Just zooming in a little bit more. Um, this is the existing area, which is car park. Um, the applicant has confirmed that the area where the building would be located is not a public car park. It is um, gated and it is used for harbour related car parking or storage only. Um, there's some other buildings to point out here. This building here, this sorry, this building just here is called Custom House. That is a Grade 2 listed building that the Conservation Officer makes reference to. Um, just some photos, um, this one really to show ozone terrace in the background. This is um, where the uh, building would be located and this one shows that it's been used in the past for general storage. Um, by the Harbour Master for their general day-to-day um, -day functions. When you look at um, this photo here, it shows you the edge of the public toilets at the moment. Then you have a separation um, of the road between the bottom of the gardens of the properties in Ozone Terrace. Just a, just a wider view, as you see, there's no storage in this picture, but there's um, car parking here. The entrance um, to the proposed building would be from the south here in the same way that you get into the car park um, storage area at the moment. Um, this one I'll just put on to show you the whole of the conservation area because the conservation officer has made particular reference of the building being harmful to the conservation area. And the building is actually, that's the bowling green, and it is just on the edge of the conservation area. Well, the conservation area takes in a lot of other buildings and important structures. Um, and our building would be here, or the Harbour Masters building rather, would be here, which is just inside the boundary of the, con of the conservation area. Um, there's the public toilets outside of the boundary. Um, ozone Terrace is within the boundary of the conservation area um, and this is the, um, the, the dark coloured buildings or the listed or the listed buildings. Um, this is the proposed building. It has been amended during the course of the application to address the concerns of English heritage um, and the materials have been changed to natural slate, cedar boarding, which would weather in due course, the Portland stone plinth, uh, the side doors here would be timber, uh, but there is a metal roller door and the reason for that is um, because the Harbour Master said he's got a JCB and other um, larger equipment that they need the size of that door to um, get the equipment through. Now the building is 3.5 metres to the eaves in height, 5.4 metres to the ridge, it's 90, 19 metres um, in length and it's seven metres wide. Uh, this is the floor plans. Uh, this is the, the building again. It just shows um, the, the internal arrangements, storage, um, office, toilets. I think is the most helpful plan um, to compare the building with the um, public toilets. So these are the top public toilets building set behind it and it, um, higher. It is longer than the, the um, public, existing public toilets building. And you can see it here. This would be um, looking from the properties in Ozone Terrace. So this is the public toilets with that steep um, gable. This is the electricity substation and then there's a wall surrounding the site. And then the proposed building um, has got the gable end there. So there's a bit of a gap there. There's a visual gap here. Um, obviously, there is a, a difference between what the people in um, Ozone Terrace can see at the moment, because at the moment uh, they can, can see from their properties to the harbour, depending on what materials are stored in that car park. And obviously they're concerned because um, their, their view would alter um, from, from this building. 
Um, so the, the principle is considered to be acceptable. It is within the defined development boundary. The harbour master has put in some supporting information as a response to the conservation officer's um, concerns. Her main concern was the impact of the building on the setting of the conservation area and that the view from the custom house building would be altered um, and that there was really no just no justification in the heritage statement or the design statement to say why it needed to be in that location. Now, the applicants came back with some further information to say um, that there really wasn't that many other locations it could be put in that would cause less harm. Um, it's considered to be in the public interest because it will provide um, storage for the harbour master, uh, fishermen, and they've also referred to visiting yachts, yachts people be able to use the facilities. The visual impact isn't considered to be significant given its location amongst the, um, the car park and the other paraphernalia around the harbour. And we don't consider that the impact on the conservation area in the listed building is significantly harmful. Um, the neighbouring amenity, um, as I showed on that um, photograph, there's a gap between the bottom of the gardens, then the road, then the building. And as we all know in planning, you don't have a right to review. You do have a right to um, loss of light or loss of outlook. There would be no loss of outlook because this wouldn't sit in the front of any windows and it wouldn't affect any um, um, privacy because there's no windows on the end elevation and there is no loss of public car parking. So the recommendation is to grant permission um, subject to the standard three year time limit, the plans list condition and the material details to be agreed. Um, and also unexpected contamination because um, environmental health have asked for that because of previous uses. And the other thing that we've done, I think, which is quite important, we're saying this is the building to be used for the harbour master only, no other commercial use so that we can um, monitor that use and, and um, uh, uh, contain it in future. It's not industrial, it's commercial and it actually it's not commercial either because it's there's no there's no commercial element it is for the for the harbour monster fishermen and visiting yachtsmen for storage office and toilet purposes only so that's that recommendation uh, which is in the end of your report with those conditions on it and um, thank you very much chairman thank you joe thank you for that presentation I will now invite Alison Sharp to read out the three written representations received from members of the public. Over to you, Alison. Dr. Michael House objects. Good morning. Thank you for hearing my statement. As an occupant of six ozone terrace, the neighbouring property most affected by the application, I object strongly to the proposal to erect a very large, hideous industrial building directly in front of our property. Before you think, well, he would object, wouldn't he? You should be aware, following your guidelines, that there are a number of serious planning issues in addition to its effect on ozone terrace that render this application totally unacceptable. The large store will have a very damaging impact on the character of the area, turning a unique conservation area into an industrial setting and blocking views of the special asset Ozone Terrace. There have been no industrial buildings in this site for over 140 years. Today, it is essentially a car, a car park. The external design and appearance of the new building is unacceptable and suffers from the problem of making a large industrial store presentable. It is totally out of keeping with the appearance of Ozone Terrace, the nearby Grade 2 listed custom house and the immediately adjacent classic stone toilet block. I have already alluded to the effect of the development on neighbouring properties and specifically in our case six ozone terrace. 
the new building would clearly affect our light and block our outlook. Working all hours, it would introduce a noisy industrial facility, including a very large industrial refrigerator, all badly impacting on the well-being of the residents of the properties nearby. There is clearly an issue of highway safety as vehicles leaving the store are blind to vehicles coming east along the busy Monmouth Beach Road. There is no evidence your highways department has considered this problem. The erection of this monstrous building would be against the council's statutory responsibility, at least to preserve and whenever possible to enhance the appearance and character of conservation areas, planning listed buildings and conservation act 1990. Also, it would be contrary to the policy stated in the West Dorset local plan, which vows to protect the character and natural beauty of this area. I hope you do not mind me observing that this planning application at this site would have been totally unnecessary if Dorset Council and Lyme Regis Council could have found a way of keeping the Harbour Master's store in its existing location in the industrial area at the west end of Monmouth Beach outside the conservation area. Thus, in my view, Lyme Regis Town Council is a conflicted consultee. Consequently, from my previous comments, there are a number of incontrovertible reasons why this planning application should be refused. Paul Anderson objects. Thank you for taking time to read our submission. We object to the proposal in the strongest possible terms, and it is our view that the application, which is full of inaccuracies and is regularly misleading, should be rejected. We agree that harbour activity should be supported and accept that there may be a need for additional or alternative storage. We object, however, to the proposal to site a large, unsightly and noisy facility in a residential and leisure based area. The fact that the proposed site is located in the Lyme Regis conservation area and the Dorset area of outstanding natural beauty only strengthens our view that such a building has no place in the proposed location. In our view, the proposed development will serve to diminish, not enhance the area. The views of and from adjacent listed buildings and heritage assets, as well as the World Heritage Coast, will be seriously affected by any form of industrial development on the site. The need for storage should not be allowed to ride roughshod over matters of wider importance and the Council's obligations to protect the conservation area, the AONB and the World Heritage Site. In the supporting information added to the planning portal on 17th August, the applicant does not accept some of the views of the Conservation Officer. It is our view that the Conservation Officer is doing her job admirably to guide the planning committee to come to a decision which takes into account the responsibility it has, not just for today, but for future generations. The applicant does not accept concerns about the size of the building. The fact is that the proposal is for a large industrial building to be placed in a location where there is no evidence of previous industrial use and which is a residential and leisure area. The siting of an industrial building should not be permitted in this location and this should be the decision reached 
regardless of the size or form of the building. The noise from the proposed building and the hours of use remain of great concern, as do the unanswered questions regarding the vehicular access to the site, the parking spaces and the space for turning or maneuver maneuvering. Jeopardising road safety where so many small children run along the road to get to the beach is a significant worry. The site proposed for development is currently designated as a boat park and should be used as such and not repurposed for industrial use. It must be possible to find a suitable piece of land for the required storage and an alternative site within the industrial area to the west would be more appropriate. Carl O'Grady objects. Good morning and thank you for hearing my statement of objection. In his latest submission to the planning officer, the applicant has given two arguments for the location of the proposed large industrial store building. Essentially, they are that ozone terrace does not matter and that as the car parks in front of ozone terrace are the only suitable land that Dorset Council owns in the harbour area, the building should be allowed to be located there. From a planning viewpoint, the arguments are unsustainable. It is sad that the applicant has had to denigrate ozone terrace in order to justify citing a huge, hideous industrial building in the area directly in front of the terrace, part of the conservation area. One has to assume that ozone terrace was included in the conservation area because it was an asset worth preserving. Since it was placed in a conservation area, all changes made to the properties are subject to strict planning requirements to ensure the asset is maintained. For example, recently one owner was refused permission to put decking in the front garden. It would be completely illogical to refuse changes such as decking to properties on Ozone Terrace, but allow a hideous industrial store right in front of it. The applicant has criticised the rendering on my property, six Ozone Terrace. This was done by a previous owner, and I think before it was designated a conservation area. I believe there were building preservation reasons that made it necessary. Nevertheless, it is in keeping with the colourful terrace of properties behind Ozone and with the Custom House and other properties nearby. The applicant dislikes the blue colour of my property and suggests his hideous building would be beneficial by blocking people's views of six Ozone Terrace. What colour would you like it to be if this prevents a huge building in front of my property? Hundreds of visitors every year who take pictures of Ozone Terrace think it is a special asset. It is and it should be protected and not harmed by the imposition of this huge store. The argument for locating the building in this car park, as it is the only land that Dorset Council owns, is weak. It implies, I hope wrongly, that Dorset Council will put the building there because it can, irrespective of the effect on neighbouring properties and the character of the area. That's all, Chairman. Thank you very much, Alison. I will now call on Joe Riley to respond with any salient points you may wish to uh, uh, clarify. OK, thank you. Let me just try and work this out again. Um, I 
I did actually prepare this, <laughs> in case you asked. Um, this is uh, what the applicant provided, the harbour harbour master provided. Oh, by the way, we've got to remember this application is only in front of committee because Dorset Council are the applicants. We've had no objection from um, the town council. So um, the app, the harbour masters provided this, showing the plan of land that they own, um, and this is the um, car park area here. So what he was saying is, if they needed to put the building. Um, somewhere else on land that they that they own um, that could be seen as being more prominent more harmful you know do you want another building down the end of the down the end of the cob along here at all um, you couldn't put a building along the, the slipway i don't believe because that would affect the uh, running of the harbour i'm not quite sure what that area of land there is i don't think that's that's actually concrete i think that might just be beach so that you know that does leave them with a limited amount of land um that they own as the, as the harbour authority to put the building um, and that's why they're proposing to put the building there in their existing compound where they already use the compound for um, storage and they just need a building which is um, more secure um, and and safe so I don't know if that helps helps your question. Um, question. Um, and in terms of this, again, the, the difference in the impact on the properties of Ozone Terrace, you know, they've got that building there, which is the public toilet building, a substation, um, a brick wall, and you've got a means of separation here of the road. Then you've got the bottom of the gardens before you get to, to the houses. So having a building that's lower in height than these, um, than the public toilets isn't, um, considered to be um, detracting from the uh, appearance of Rosone Terrace. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Are there any points to be raised by highways or any other council officer? Um, morning, Chair. Colin Graham, Dorset Council, Highway Liaison Officer. Um, I'm I'm stood in for my colleague Guy Tetley, who dealt with this application, who's currently on leave, for which he apologises. And and um, yeah, I'd just like to add that um, the he said there's no objection. There was comments about there being no further explanation or justification. The access to the south of the building onto um, I don't think that's Ozone Terrace because Ozone Terrace appears to be at the north side. That's what's showing on the Ordnance Survey. But the main access road to the car park on the south side there, um, there's this um, storage shed is already going where there is an access there. It would be in line with the end wall at the south elevation, which is from adjacent. Um, I think it's an electricity substation or something, but the main feature of the fact is the wall already uh, restricts visibility to the existing entrance. The parking within that existing site is in echelon form, so cars drive in. The, the only turning you've got is uh, at the access and in the hatched area, so vehicles already manoeuvre and come out in that area anyway. So this would be fundamentally no different. The, um, the setback of the building from the edge of that hatched area is, sorry, from the edge of the carriageway there is two metres, which is the minimum uh, requirement for visibility on a manual for streets. The um, ozone terrace to the north in front of the houses, there we go, shown on the plan there quite clearly. That is the actual public uh, right of way. That's the route that pedestrians are supposed to take. I appreciate, though, it's a holiday sea, you know, seaside location. And if you look to the south of the um, proposed door, on the south side of the carriageway, that yes, right where the pointer is now there, um, there is it's block paved area. It's designed it's a pedestrian surface that you can walk on and it's got a curb to it that lines up then to the beach on the south side of the um, sort of esplanade so people coming from the beach there was a comment there about small children one could, that's 
brilliant on that photo, thank you. One can see that children coming from the car park and indeed most pedestrians would choose to walk on the south side where it's paved. So that would be away from the access to the storage shed and they'd stay on that side of the road because that's the same side of the road as the beach. Um, those people that wish to go through um, o uh, Ozone Terrace to the north on a right of way, they could still carry on doing so. And indeed, on the corner right there um, was the entrance to the public toilets for the gents and ladies. So there's already the, exactly there. There's already pedestrians in that location, and I see no uh, record of any pedestrian injuries. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, um, thank you very much indeed um, uh, for, the, the, for your uh, um, comments. Members, before I open the debate, uh, may I remind you to direct any questions or remarks through the chair. I will invite members to speak in turn. Requesting to speak needs to be made by the virtual chat facility. Can I also remind members that the chat facility is for the smooth running of the meeting and not to be used for discussions on the merits of the application. Keep your microphones on mute when not speaking and to maintain audio quality. I now, now open the debate to members. Uh, chairman. Yes, yes, Jane. Um, uh, my connection dropped. I it just picked it up at the very end of the officer's comments, and then it dropped again. So I'm wondering whether I ought to make any comments on this application because I've only heard two or three minutes of. Um, Officers' explanations and everything. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dancer. Let me let me um, let me call on uh, Philip Crowther for his comments. Thank you, Chairman. So, so Councillor Dunsey, if 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 you've missed the majority of the, the presentation, uh -huh. the public speaking, then then you shouldn't take part in the debate. I'm afraid it's it's one of the unfortunate things about virtual meetings. Okay, so I will take no part in this debate. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, we've got a couple of um, members requesting to speak in the um, in the chat facility. So I think the oh, normal, right. normal course of events would you would be to take them in turn of, of their. Okay. Uh, so they're coming. I was looking at the, the wrong chat box. <laughs> right. Point of order. Sorry, sorry. Point of order, Chairman. Do do you need a, a vice chairman for this meeting? Well, I was hoping, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Louis. Uh, I was hoping that, in fact, uh, 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 Bill would join us uh, in due course, but he hasn't done so. So, yes, let me have a word with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the, the Democratic Services as to see if, if we can elect a vice chairman at this point in uh, this juncture. Chairman, yes, you, you can elect a vice chairman. That just has to be done in the usual way with a with a vote to elect a vice chairman for the remainder of this meeting. Thank you, thank you. Uh, um, can I be a proposer? Can I propose that Louis Leary become a vice chairman for the for the remainder of the meeting, uh, or until uh, Councillor Bill Pike joins us? Um, can I take a vote on that, please? Right, so I'll go through in the order. Um, Councillor Mike Barr. Chairman, sorry to interrupt, it's Phil Crowder. I think um, just for form, you would need a seconder for, for the proposal of, Lou, of Councillor O'Leary as, as Vice Chairman. And, and I think, um, although um, subject to, to um, um, Denise's comments, I think it would be for the duration of the, the meeting, whether Councillor Pipe is able to join us or not. Yeah, thank you, Phil, for that. Do I have a seconder for that proposal? I'll second it, Chairman. Councillor Dunseith. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, right now I'll go through. I'll go through to see if we've got uh, all, all the members voting. I'll call on Councillor Mike Barron to start with. In favour. Uh, uh, Councillor Dave Bowell. In favour. Uh, Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Clayton. I support that, Chair. Yes. Councillor Susan Copping. In favour, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Nick Ireland. In favour. I think you've joined the meeting, Nick. I have, David, uh, thank you. Nice nice to see you. Uh, just wanted to clarify one point. I did ask for any uh, anyone who has pecuniary interests in any item on the agenda. Can I assume that that doesn't apply to you? Correct. Thank you. And you're in favour? Yes. Uh, for clarity, uh, uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary. Uh, in favour. Uh, yeah, Councillor Kate Weller. Oh. Councillor Sarah Williams. Oh. And Councillor John Burr. In favour. Thank you, Louis. You are now Vice Chairman for the re remainder of the meeting, and uh, and uh, I rely on you to pick up the. Um, I'll keep an eye on the chat, Bob. Uh, that's very kind. And uh, and who have I got first to speak? Uh, you had Jean to speak, uh, but now it's Councillor Clayton to speak, and it's Jean. Jean hasn't finished. Yeah, now I call on Councillor Clayton to actually uh, uh, start the debate. Thank you, Chair. Um, what I'm trying to balance in my mind are the concerns of the conservation area officer and the actual need for such a building. I noticed the conservation officer asked that a, a full options appraisal should be undertaken for alternative sites. And uh, Joe Riley did mention other possible sites. Could I ask to what extent those sites have been fully appraised as being alternatives? Thank you, uh, Councillor Kelvin. Uh, I'll now ask on Joe uh, uh, to, to respond to that, uh, that question. Um, well, obviously, I'm not the harbour master or the applicants, so um, all I can rely on is the additional information that the applicant provided in response to um, the conservation officer's comments. Um, they are on um, the website as supporting information. Um, basically, the Harbour Master was, say, was saying um, that, again, it's because of the um, costs involved and looking at alternative locations that they that weren't suitable. I don't know how much detail the Harbour Master has gone into um, in appraising um, alternative sites, but this would seem the most obvious one for him because it already is the Harbour Master's compound. So they already own it, they already use it. All they're wanting to do is put a building on the site where they normally use it for storage. So I guess cost effective wise for them, um, you know, why? I don't know what how, if they've looked at hundreds of different alternative sites that they don't own. This is the one that apply, they're applying for. Um, I'm not party to, you know, um, any, any much more supporting information than that, I, you know. I can't really help you. You'd have to ask, ask the harbour master direct, but unfortunately they're not here to ask. But that's that's my reasoning um, that this that they own it, um, and that you know alternative locations on that plan would have been more harmful and more um, unpractical. So this is the location that that, that they applied for. Okay. Thank you, Joy. Uh, Councillor Clayton, do, do you wish to come back on that? Um, no, um, I, I don't think the um, the officer can answer any more fully than that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Clayton. Who we have next, uh, Louis? You have Councillor John Worth, Chairman. Uh, Councillor John, uh, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, this uh, this is to do with a commercial working harbour. Um, and we need the right facilities for that to be be viable um, and it's also being used for um, for the fishermen's store as well and obviously fishing is a major part of um, the commercial side of, of Lyme Regis Harbour. Um, I can understand residents concerns about having a building in front of their their line of sight to the harbour um, however we have to consider you know the the economy of the area as well as 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 you know people's people's view um and therefore i i think that um if 
there was an alternative I'm sure that would have been looked at but I think as it's currently the only site available which is in the ownership of Dorset Council and is all also currently the Harbour Master storage area um, I think probably this is the way <clears> that it will have to go but I'll listen to other people's input before I make a final decision. Thank you very much John. Louis who have you got next? Uh, Chairman you have Councillor Kate Weller next. Councillor Weller Kate, would you wish to speak? Thank you very much Chairman, thank you Councillor O'Leary. Um, the, the, uh, as, as Councillor Worth says, this is a working harbour. Um, buildings of this nature are required in, in all of our working harbours. Um, we have expensive equipment that needs to be stored. We have um, working fishermen who need to have um, equipment and, and expensive equipment stored. The, you know, we're in the 21st century now where um, things are have moved on enormously. This is a site within the Harbour Master's um, remit. It makes sense for it to be there. I think that um, they've done their best as far as I can see from what um, Joe's presentation to mitigate the worst elements of an industrial building. They, they've brought the, the height down below that of the public convenience, which was good. Um, and they've, uh, they, they've used materials that will blend in. Yes, it will look different at first. Um, that's the truth of any, any new building, um, but it will blend, blend in. It is going to make an enormous difference, I think, to um, the, the working economy of the harbour. And, and we do need to be mindful of that. Um, so I will be supporting the, the application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Weller. Um, Councillor O'Leary. You have uh, Councillor Sarah Williams next, and then that's that's the only person left at the Councillor moment. Councillor Williams, would you like to speak now? Yeah, thank you. A uh, question for Joe. Um, one of the um, objectors brought up the problem with noise. Is there any soundproofing going into the building? I mean, obviously, it will, the fishermen. They could be going in fairly early in the morning, depending on, on tides. Um, harbour work, there might be emergency work work to be done sort of late, late in the evening, but is there any soundproofing going into the building? Um, Thank you, Councillor Williams. Can yeah. I pass that back to Councillor Joe Riley? Oh, I'm <laughs> no, I'm not a councillor. Um, um, I don't know the details of the construction other than what has been submitted on the on the application um, and they've said what the proposed materials are um, as far as we as far as the floor plan show and the application shows it just says gen, it just says storage so no um, it's just be it's normal normal construction but you've got to bear in mind whatever they're storing in there they could be storing in the open at the moment so I'm sure it'd be quieter having the materials stored inside than it would be them moving them around and shuffling them around outside at the moment but I'm not um, I'm not a building control officer so I don't know the exact details of the of the construction um, but I'm guessing it will be be a, a solid form of construct form of construction and, and meet, meet building control yeah. standards for fireproofing yeah. so it's going to have some element of sound proofing but yeah, so it won't be above above and beyond what you'd normally expect in a in a storage building so I can't really help you any further sorry no that's that's answer my question I sort of uh, as you say it's probably be quieter than having everything stored outside okay chairman you've got councillor kate weller again councillor weller would you like to come back if I could, Chairman, thank you. Um, in terms of noise, I can't imagine that there will be anything enormously noisy. I mean, if the JCB need repairing, needed repairing, I imagine it would need to be taken to a workshop rather than um, there. Um, and fishermen on the whole aren't making huge amount of noise, certainly not when they're, you know, loading up crates and things the crates aren't, aren't um they're not heavy metal ones or anything else so um I, as as um joe indicates it will be no noisier than them um loading their crates and working in the open indeed it should be 
um, a, a better view in that respect because it's going to be tidier, um, it's going to be neater, um, and any any smelly uh, elements of the storage will be contained rather than um, out in the open. So in many respects, they may find it will be beneficial to them. Thank you, Councillor Weller. Councillor O'Leary, do we have any uh, one else to speak? No. No, not the moment, Chairman. I think, uh, no, Councillor Weller said she'd be voting in favour. I'm not sure if that, I don't think that was an official um, proposal, though. Right. I'm happy to propose to, to propose that we um, support the application, Chair, if that would be helpful. Proposal there, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor John Worth, I'm happy to second that proposal. So that's seconded by John Worth, and the, the proposal was uh, Councillor Weller, wasn't it? Right, okay, yes. now. I'm going to go through on re re road court. There's no one else uh, wishing to make a statement. I will go through each of the members in turn to ask uh, which way uh, they would like to uh, to vote. Bearing in mind, of course, uh, um, members, that in fact uh, loss of views is not, not uh, to be taken into account uh, because it's not a material consideration. So, so okay, Councillor Councillor Barron, uh, in favour. Thank you, Councillor Bowell. In favour. Councillor Clayton. Yes, support, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Cochin. In favour, Chair. Uh, Councillor Denser. She can't take part. Not taking part, Chairman. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me, uh, Councillor Denser. Councillor Ireland. I'm not taking part either. I missed most of the presentation. Oh, thank you. Councillor uh, uh, O'Leary. For Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Weller, of course, for Four. clarity. Councillor Williams. For German. And uh, for clarity, Councillor Worth. In favour. Thank you. I am also in favour, so that uh, that is as recorded. Thank you, members. That concludes uh, this particular uh, item of debate, and we now go on. Uh, item 5B on the agenda, as we've already uh, uh, established, has been deferred. So in that case, we're going on to item C on the agenda, and that is Rury Bridge, Skilling Road, Bridport. Now, this is still work repairs and maintenance painting provisions of ab and provisions of anti-bird perching coils and associated work. And I will now invite Councillor Lindsay Fellow, Fellow, a senior planning officer, to introduce the item. Oh, Councillor Lindsay. Lindsay, are you available? <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Chair. I'm having a slight IT issues with the uh, microphone there and uh, um, okay. yes yeah, sorry uh, yeah no I'm just a, a planning officer um, not a councillor or um, I, I, yes, I, I, I did correct myself uh, <laughs> Lindsay I do apologize <laughs> um, right this application um, can you see my screen it should just be the front screen hopefully yes we see the front Thank screen you. yes brilliant this application um, has come to committee because it is um, the and uh, the applicant is Dorset Council. Um, it's for, as uh, the chairman said, it's for Brewery Bridge in Bridport for steelwork repairs, maintenance, painting, provision of anti-bird perching calls and associated works. Um, the um, application before you is for listed building consent only. Um, therefore, only uh, the impact of the heritage asset was uh, looked at. The proposal relates to a grade two listed structure consisting of a single span road bridge over the river Brit with ornamental iron parapet and four ashlar pillars with recessed panels. Um, and as you can see, it's that's uh, the, the site there. It is, um, and there's the aerial view. Um, here are the um, listed building surrounding it. So you've got the bridge itself that's listed and, and the brewery buildings around that is that are also least, uh, listed. It's located outside the conservation area, but obviously in close proximity to listed brewery buildings. 
the uh, proposal is to remove by uh, mechanical means at least 150 external surface rivets and a number of further rivets presently uh, unaccessible on, un on the underside of the remaining iron structure panels. It's to remove the metal brackets from the metal work, to clear out and clean junctions between ironwork and masonry piers and introduce joint sealant material and packing, to prepare and repaint all metal work to bridge with a mix of paints um, and anti-bird bird perching calls to be provided to the bottom of the flanges of the plate grinders and beams. And this is the plan that they submitted with the anti-bird perches and all the uh, rivets. Uh, here are the photos. Um, the um, due for, through the consultation, Historic England um, did not wish to object to the proposals, and the Dorset Council's Conservation Officer also subject, uh, uh, supported it, subject to conditions. However, the um, conditions that were put on the report at the time, um, some of them is now being brought to light, which I believe was in the update sheet. Um, has been actually been brought to light that, as you can see from these photos, they've actually started the works. Um, so it's now um, so, uh, some of the originally proposed conditions are now not relevant. Um, therefore, at the end of this um, slides, I have also put a, um, a slide of the um, following conditions that are now recommended. Um, and here are, the, are some other photos of the bridge. Um, these two photos are, are what uh, the photos that were submitted as part of the application to show what it looked like before the works had started. And that's another one that was submitted for the underside to see obviously the works that needs to be repaired. Um, the main um, the main issue of this, obviously, with it being a listed building application, was the impact on the heritage asset, and which um, it's considered that with the recommended conditions the proposal is acceptable in relation to the heritage asset. Um, and here are the now proposed conditions. Obviously, now it's been brought to light that it has actually um, started. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That's, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Are there any points to be raised by highways or any other council officer? Um, let me have a quick. It was um, no, because it was a listed building application. Um, but um, I will let obviously let the highways officer speak. But the, uh, they weren't actually consulted at the time highways because it's a listed building application and obviously heritage asset can only be considered. OK, obviously Thanks. Colin. Yeah, um, good morning, Colin Graham, Dorset Highways. Uh, yes, my colleague didn't comment. I had a quick look. It's to do with the bridge, some structures that's a uh, specialist. Um, I can't see any reason um, that we would have complained or raised any specific requirements that the uh, bridges team lead wouldn't have done. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Guy. OK, we've got no other comments, so I now open the debate to members. And I believe that uh, Councillor Kate Weller wishes to speak. I think that was from the previous debate, Chairman. Yes, mm. no, I've, I've got no comments, yeah. Chairman. Yeah, no, so the only person I've got is Councillor Sarah Williams, Chairman. All right, and in that case, Ed, I'm sorry, my, my phone is telling me porkies. I now, I now I call on Councillor Sarah Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to say this is necessary work to um, to um, restore this this uh, heritage asset. It's also um, a route to the local um, St Mary's School, uh, up towards the state and into EEP. So I propose we accept re recommendation. Proposal, thank you. Right, that's a proposal from Councillor Williams. Do we have a seconder? Kate Weller here, I'll second. Oh, Councillor Jean Dunty wishes to speak, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, right. Uh, Councillor uh, Wells. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Chairman. Uh, all right. Councilor I asked Wells. to speak, but it was only, I was only going to second the motion. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, well, Councillor Weller has uh, uh, seconded it. Right, okay. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak? Then I will put it to the vote. Councillor right. Shortel, Councillor Shortel, it's Anne Collins here. Can I just clarify that's in respect of the amended conditions listed on the update sheet and as per the presentation on the screen? Can I verify that with uh, Councillor Williams and Councillor? Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Then I will take the roll call of both. Can I start by Councillor Mike Byron? Oh, in favour. Councillor Dave Bowell. In favour, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Kelvin Clayton. In favour, Chair. Councillor Susan Cocken. In favour, Chair. Councillor Jean Danseth. In favour, Chair. Councillor Nick Arlen. In favour. Councillor Louis O'Leary. In favour. And uh, for, for clarification, Councillor uh, Weller. For. Uh, Councillor Williams, in clarification. In favour. Thank you. And then Councillor John Worth. In favour, Chairman. I'm also in favour, and that is unanimous. And thank you for that, uh, members. I complete that particular application. We're now going on to application 5D on the agenda, WP 20.00307 ADV, and that is at Victoria Square Roundabout, Portland. And it's for the display of non illuminating sign, and it's a retrospective application. I will now Call, uh, again, call on uh, 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 Lindsay Flello, a senior planning officer, to introduce the item. Hi, yes. Uh, sorry, no, I, I'm not a, a senior planner. I'm just a, a planning officer. Um, but um, yes, this application again is um, going to committee as the applicant is um, Dorset Council. Um, and as was said, it was a, it's a display of a non-illuminated sign, um, which is retrospective. So the um, app, um, the application site is the first, I suppose, first roundabout to some degree that you get to when you're on Portland. There are obviously a few roundabouts before that, but this is kind of the the main roundabout at the bottom of um, Portland. And the proposal um, is, sorry, I'll just get a pointer so it's easier. Um, the proposal is to put this is that the sign is already there, um, and here's an aerial view. Um, showing it. So the proposal is a retrospective application for a non-illuminated <coughs> advert sign that welcomes people to Portland. The sign has a maximum height of approximately 2.2 metres with a width of 0.92 metres and a depth of approximately 0.1 metres. Um, it is just outside the conservation area. Um, and this is the elevations of the, of the, the proposal. Um, the highway officer considered that the, pro the proposal um, did not present a material harm. However, Portland Town Council did object to this application as, um, as, um, as it clutters the roundabout and causes a distraction and it also impacts on Portland Town Council groundworks. Um, so here are the, the photos um, and as you can see it's that sign here that welcomes you to Portland. And here are the other photos as well. Um, as this application is uh, is for consent to display an advert, only amenity and public safety can be taken into consideration. <coughs> um, and these are the main issues. Um, Portland Town Council objects, objected to the application, as I said, due to clutter of the roundabout and causing a distraction. However, Dorset Council Highways Department raised no objections. Therefore, it was considered that in terms of highway safety, the application would, um, was acceptable. Um, with regards to amenity, Victoria Square roundabout is a large roundabout with landscaping and three sponsorship signs. Portland Town Council object to the pro proposal as it clutters the roundabout. However, officers consider that due to the size of the roundabout and the openness of the proposed sign, that the proposal does not appear as cluttered on the roundabout and does not have a cumulative negative impact on the area. It's also considered to not be dom overly dominant or imposing and therefore considered to be acceptable uh, therefore the recommendation um, for, by the officer was um, to re um, to grant the application um, when in accordance with these recommended conditions. Thank you Alison, that's uh, very kind. I can now call on, uh, I now call on, uh, sorry uh, Lindsay, I now call on Alison Sharp to read out the written represent representation received from a member of the public. 
Over to you, Alison. Thank you. Sue Gaunt, Community Committee Chairman, Rotary Club, supports. I would like to put forward the reasons for the erection and the keeping of the sign, welcoming people to the Rotary Club of Ireland and Royal Manor of Portland, similar to the Rotary sign in Weymouth, welcoming people to Weymouth. This is on the Preston Road. We raise a lot of money for local charities and clubs on the island. We are not asking for donations. We just want the world to know that we are here to help. We assist at most local events and we enjoy helping out. The sign is surely a benefit to the local community and visitors showing Portland to be a welcoming community. The position of the sign was decreed by Dorset Council. We asked for a welcoming sign to be placed at the entrance to Portland. I hope you'll consider all these facts and agree that the Rotary Club of Ireland and Royal Manor of Portland is a valuable asset to the island. That's all, Chairman. Thank you, Alison. I now call on Lindsay Fellow to respond to an, with any salient points regarding that uh, that representation. Um, no, I haven't got anything. Thank you. Uh, are there any points to be raised by highways? I know they were mentioned uh, in the presentation. Um, yeah, good morning, Gancha. Uh, um, no, I wasn't involved in the original sort of um, uh, discussions of its placement or anything like that. Um, and as you say, it's a retrospective application. I did look at it and I, I can't see any reason that, that we'd object. It doesn't block, uh, most importantly, it doesn't object, uh, block abstract visibility to the near side approach for traffic coming around a roundabout. And it wouldn't have much of an effect, if anything, because it's edge on when you come out of Osprey Quay itself. Um, years ago, I was involved with the reopening of the roundabout because it used to be a dumbbell roundabout through the square. So I'm very familiar with the site, but that was back in 1995, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diane. I now open debate from members. Uh, Councillor Lewis, who we've got to speak? The only person I've got to speak is Councillor Susan Cockins. Susan Cockins. OK, over to uh, Councillor Cockins. Um, obviously, being a Portland resident, I know this roundabout extremely well. Um, and I really like the sign. I have to actually go against the town council on this, so the most we won't speak to me again. But I think it's great. It's a lot better than some of the signs that are advertising local estate agents or carpets. They look really tech. Well, I don't particularly like them. I think the sign looks great. It's welcoming people to Portland. Um, and I would be to propose to support this retrospective um, sign because I think it looks really good. So that's that's my comment. Thank you, Councillor Cockin. Uh, members, do we have a seconder? Uh, we have Councillor Nick Arland to speak and Councillor Kate Weller to speak. I'm not sure if they're just a second or if they actually want to wish if they actually wish to speak. Yeah, Council I'm happy to second. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Council, I'm not sure if Councillor Weller wanted to speak or if she just wanted to. No, second. I was just going to second, so that's fine. Yeah. OK, right, if there's no other speakers, I'll put that to the to the third. I now do the roll call, so I'll start uh, off. I've got Councillor Jean Dante just come through as well. Sorry, Chairman. Oh, right, OK. Councillor Dante, do you wish to speak? Okay. I beg your pardon. I missed that. I think she's frozen. <laughs> right. Sorry, Jean, you're frozen. Oh, are you back with us, Jean? Yes, no, I haven't gone. Oh, she's gone, she's gone again. Thank you. All right, I, I heard no objection. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right, sorry. Yeah. Do a roll call. Can I call, now call on uh, Councillor Mike Barron? Yeah, uh, I'm in favour. Uh, yeah. Councillor Dave Bolwell. 
In favour, Chair. Uh, Councillor Kevin Clayton. In favour, Chair. Councillor Susan Cockin. For. In favour, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Jean Dunseth, if you're able to connect. Are you able to connect, Councillor Dunseth? In favour, Chair. Oh, you are good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Nick Ireland. In yeah, favour. For clarity, thank you. Councillor Louis Leary. Uh, in favour, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Weller. Four. Thank you. Councillor Williams for clarity. And Councillor John Ware. In favour, Chair. Thank you. That, and I'm in favour as well, so that's unanimous. Thank you, members. Now we go on to the final item. Now, I want to verify if anyone is looking for, for a, a comfort break at this particular moment in time. No, in that case, then we'll go straight into to, uh, item 5E, and that is a WP 200306 OBL, and that's the redundant building Broadcroft Quarry, Bumpers Lane, Portland, DT 51HY. And that's the modification of planning objection on section 106 agreement dated the 24th of June 2015, and the original planning approval WP. 140330 OUT. I will now invite uh, uh, Emma Telford to, uh, uh, I think, a senior planning officer to introduce this item. Councillor Emma. <laughs> Emma. Thank you, Chair. Um, Thank you. Can I just check that you can see my um, screen? Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, there we go. Um, thank you. Um, so this application in front of us is to modify the Section 106 agreement at the site Bumpers Lane, Portland. Um, the next slide is showing an outline of the application site in red. Um, you've got Wakeham Road down here um, and then the site is accessed off of Bumpers Lane. So the site benefits from um, both outline and reserved matters permission for the erection of 71 dwellings. Um, development has commenced on the site um, with a number of dwellings having been completed and also marketed on the site. Um, this application is looking to modify the Section 106 agreement of the outline permission. Um, the Section 106 required 25% of the homes to be provided as affordable, uh, which would equate to 17.75 affordable units. Um, this application is looking to remove um, the obligation for that affordable housing requirement. Um, a viability report was submitted and sent to the District Valuer Services, the DVS, to assess. Um, and they have concluded that a scheme providing 25% affordable would not be financially viable. This is due to the abnormal costs which were not anticipated, which included removal of contaminated soils, importation of clean soil, um, and contamination and asbestos removal and remediation. And these costs have already been occurred. Um, an off-site public open space contribution has also been made in line with the section 106. Um, it, it's important to set out that the DVS um, have concluded that the scale of abnormal costs has meant that the site is unviable for any level of affordable housing. So although the scheme would not provide affordable housing, it would still include a number of smaller affordable units. Um, I've included this table which is taken from um, the reviability report of the DVS and it shows the breakdown of the units um, to be provided and the average value per unit but it does show that there's going to be eight one-bed apartments, six two-bed flats over garages, 
13 two bed terrace properties and 15 two bed semi detached properties. And this equates to 42 units being two bed or smaller on the site. Um, so in conclusion, the officer recommendation is to get delegate authority to the nominated officer to modify the Section 106 agreement to remove the affordable housing obligation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. I, I appreciate that. Are there any points to be raised by highways or any other council officer? Uh, good morning, Chair. Colin Graham again, Highways. Um, no, I've got nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I now open uh, the de debate to members. Uh, Councillor O'Leary, do we have a, a, a list of speakers? I, I haven't got any at the minute, Chairman. Does oh, anyone wish to? And Councillor Kate, sorry, Councillor Kate Weller, followed by Councillor Nick Harland. Right. Councillor Weller, wish, do you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I find it, I, I get really cross when these applications come back wanting to modify 106 agreements. Um, these are professional companies uh, to suggest that they um, were surprised by the costs of removal of contaminated soils on this site. Um, you know, put Portland is what it is. Um, you, you can't be surprised by um, suddenly finding that um, you're building on a contaminated site um, or that the costs of it uh, are, are high. They know what they're doing. Um, they accept the conditions and then they come back later and say, oh dear, what a shame we didn't know. Um, I, 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 just, I just think that when we set when we set our conditions and people accept them, um, they they need to they, they need to allow for that. Um, if costs have gone up, that's the way way of the world, isn't it? Um, you know, ordinary people have to cope with costs going up and allowing for it. And I think that these these companies need to as well. I I, I just uh, we we see this time and time again. Oh, sorry, we can't make quite so much profit, and we don't like it. We, we, we have to draw a line somewhere. Thank you, Councillor Weller. Councillor Nick Ireland. Yeah, I'd just like to agree with Kate, actually. I, I find it really depressing that this is this is suddenly a surprise to the developers. But um, could, could Emma put the um, the list of properties and prices back up on, on the thing? Councillor, yeah, uh, Emma, could you, uh, I mean, Emma, could, could you, yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, there you go. So um, <laughs> I, I've, just, I've just done a quick Google and there seems to be um, a suggestion that like the semi-detached prices are affordable. Um, well, they're not because the, the average UK highest price for a semi-detached is about 230. So, you know, it, it's, it's around about ballpark and the, the average wage in Portland is around about 25,000 pounds. So I wouldn't describe any of those as affordable. That's just my comment. Uh, you've got Councillor Jean Dunseith next, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dunseith. Would you like to speak now? Chairman, I did not hear the complete officer's report on this because unfortunately I'm having a lot of trouble with my internet. Then when I get my internet, I can't get onto Teams. So I don't feel I've heard enough. I haven't heard everything. So I would like to withdraw from this item. Thank you. You're abstaining. I'm up. Yes. OK, that's fine. OK. Do we have any other speakers? No, Chairman, not at the minute. OK. Would anyone, any member like to make a proposal? No, right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Councillor Kate, Wellington, Chairman. Oh, and Councillor uh, Kelvin Clayton. Yes, Councillor Clayton. Uh, Councillor Weller was first. Sorry, Chairman. Okay, Councillor Weller, would you like to uh, to make a proposal or uh, speak again? 
Uh, thank you, Chairman. I wonder whether um, when w whether we could have the recommendation up on screen, please. Right. OK, I call on uh, I, I call on uh, um, uh, Emma to put the recommendation up on screen, if that's possible. Thank you. Please, um, I haven't got I haven't got a slide showing the recommendation, but I'm happy to read it out again if that would help. If you could, please. Yeah. So the recommendation is to delegate authority to the nominated officer to modify the Section 1 agree 106 agreement dated the 24th of June 2015, as varied by deeds of modification dated 28th of November 2016, to remove the affordable housing obligations. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Chairman, um, I would like to make a proposal that I am against the removal of the uh, affordable housing element in the 106 agreement. OK, all right. If, um, if it's possible for somebody to work out the, 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 the correct wording for that. Do, do you have any uh, considerations in mind that you wish to object to? Um, I, I, I object to to the 106 agreement being being changed. Do you have any particular grounds for that? Um, I think that the the contaminated soils um, were a predictable element to suggest now that they were unexpected is um, uh, disingenuous. Um, and on this site, uh, the suggestion that 240, £260,000 um, for a semi-detached house uh, as affordable simply isn't. Councillor Ireland suggests that £25,000 is the average income on Portland, whilst we, we all know that a good many families on Portland are living on considerably less than that. Um, uh, I don't know what other in, uh, what other reasons. Perhaps the officers can can help me on that. Okay, I'll just verify whether you have a seconder for that, please. Councillor Clayton wished to speak as well. Yes, Chair. Um, as um, Councillor Well has put forward, I, I am happy to second. What I was going to ask um, was some indication of the consequences if we do refuse. Um, what annoys me is I feel that we've almost got a gun put to our head and say you've got to do this because otherwise the uh, the project will collapse and that annoys me immensely. Um, but if good wording can be found, I am happy to support this proposal. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Clayton. On that point, I'll, I'm going to bring in uh, Councillor Phillips uh, Crowther, our solicitor. We'd like to say a few words, Phil. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, in answer to um, Councillor Clayton's question, the um, this application does carry, well, a refusal of this application does carry the right of appeal to the Secretary of State through the Planning Inspectorate, um, and that would involve the the normal costs consequences um, if um, if the inspector found that the council's reasons for refusal um, were not justified. Um, what you need to, to bear in mind is that you have a report from the District Valuer Service, which is a, an independent service from both the council and, and the developer, and, and that they've reached a, a conclusion on viability. Um, I absolutely understand members' concerns about developers um, coming back after the event and asking for Section 106 obligations to be modified or removed, um, but one of your considerations should be, uh, as pointed out by the case officer, that this does deliver housing. Um, I think the point the case officer is making was not that, that the units are affordable, but that they are towards the lower end of market housing, or, or, or a number of them are, and also whether whether or not the contamination was known. Had it been known at the outset, um, it's likely that the valuation of the, the DVS service would be the, the advice would be the same on viability, and so there's a question there about whether this application 
would have been allowed or not at the outset had that information been known. But in short, the, the question is, yes, there is a right of appeal if you refuse. Um, and so, you, as always, you need to provide sound reasons for that, for that decision. I have a, a question, please, to uh, to uh, to uh, Philip Crowther uh, myself. Um, uh, is it correct that, in fact, that the uh, the applicant has taken this to an independent uh, uh, advisor, and they have studied it in great depth and issued a report, and and have determined that, in fact, that say it is if, if there is a viability issue in the reduction of the uh, uh, of the uh, this development. Is that correct? Uh, Chairman, my understanding, um, which um, which Emma can correct if I'm wrong, is that the the applicant um, has, has obtained their own um, viability ad, um, advice, which which prompted the application, and that the council uh, appointed the um, district valuer to, to basically to check that viability assessment on the council's behalf. So, so we've engaged the independent advice, I think. OK. All so right. Chairman, you have Councillor John Worth wishing to speak. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Worth. Uh, would you like to speak now, please? Yeah, I, sh I share members' frustrations um, when we see developers coming back for modification of uh, Section 106 agreements. In my opinion, this happens far too often to make me feel comfortable about it. However, you have to look at the information that's been provided by the officer. Um, and this has been independently assessed, um, you know, and it's come up, unfortunately, to say that this, there is no viability for this. So I feel it doesn't leave us a lot of leeway as a, as a committee because yes we we have the right to to recommend refusal of of modification of the section 106 agreement um and that's that's in the gift of members if you like however um with the weight of evidence provided by the applicant and also backed up by the independent assessors appointed by the council um i think it will be very very difficult for us to defend this um, and not accept the recommendations. So that's uh, that's my comment. Thank you, Councillor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak, uh, uh, Councillor Leary? Uh, no, Chairman. Right, OK. At the moment, then, we've got a proposal which has been seconded to refuse the uh, the, uh, the application to uh, to modify uh, the, the uh, planning obligation of the Section 106 agreement. Um, I'm going to, to vote on that, depending on, of course, um, the, the committee bearing in mind that, uh, that the comments made by our legal, uh, uh, legal um, um, officer and, and the comments just made by John Worth. So, so as there's no one else to speak, I'm actually going to take a vote now or uh, a ballot now on the refusal of the application, bearing those points in mind. So I'm going to go to Mike Barn first. I mean, I refuse. Right. I am in two minds about this, therefore I am going to abstain. Okay. Councillor Dave Bower. Um, unusually for me, I'm also in two minds and I would also like to abstain, Chair. Kelvin Clayton, you've already uh, uh, stated that. I will support the refusal. We support the refusal. Okay. Susan Cocking. Councillor Susan Cocking. Chair, I already declared that I would not take part in this application because I'd already um, declared my interest. That is correct. Councillor uh, Jean, uh, Jean doesn't say. Uh, Chairman, I withdrew from this item because I didn't get all of the information from the officer's report due to my connection dropping. Thank you. Councillor Nick Allen for clarity. Four. Four rejection. Yes. Okay. Councillor Lewin Leary. 
Against. Against rejection. Against rejection. Okay. okay. Councillor Kent Willer, you're forward. Four. Councillor Sarah Williams. Again, I'm in two minds and I abstain. Chairman, I think it's your deciding vote. Uh, I haven't voted yet. John Worth. Oh, sorry, John. John Worth, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, reluctantly, I, I vote against uh, this proposal um, for my previous mentioned uh, concerns. It's interesting. Thank you for this, uh, members. Um, I'm also <laughs> against rejection. So that gives us three for and three against. Chairman, there's there's three and three and three abstentions as well. That's correct. So it's your vote, Chairman. Congratulations <laughs> <laughs> so on your first meeting. <laughs> thank you very thank you very much for this. All uh, right, I uh, I uh, uh, refuse the I, I refuse I uh, support. Thank sorry, you. let me get this right. So I'm refusing the proposal on the table at the moment to reject the the um, the uh, problem. Yeah. Okay. So this Chairman, is Chairman, it's Denise. I didn't quite I didn't quite get that for the minutes. Um, for the minutes, I uh, I am uh, refusing the. Re re Refuse. You're refusing the rep proposal to refuse. That's that's the wording. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, Chairman, just just for the minute, it's Chairman deciding your casting vote against the proposal to refuse. That's correct. So that that proposal has been. Uh, uh, defeated, and now we go to the substantive motion of actually voting on the proposal itself. Can I now have a roll call of those? Who sorry, voted? Chairman, it's Phil, Phil Crowther. Sorry, we, uh, as far as I understand it, we don't actually have a proposal on the table as as yet. The officer's report stands as a as a recommendation, but but not as a proposal in itself. So I think you need to look for a proposer and a seconder before going to the vote. Right. Do we have a proposal, please, for acceptance of the officer's recommendation? Uh, Councillor John Worth, I propose we accept the officer's recommendation. And do we have a seconder? I will second that. <laughs> OK, right. So we've got a proposal and a seconder to, re to accept the, the officer's recommendation. Right. OK, so can now we take uh, Councillor Mike Barron? Still abstaining. Councillor Dave Bowie? Uh, still, still abstaining, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kelvin Clayton? Against, Chair. Right. Susan, uh, Councillor Susan Cocking? I'm not taking part in this application, Chair. Thank you. Sorry, you just, I, I got that down and I didn't. So pick it up. Councillor Jean Dunseth. She's not taking part in it. Chairman, Councillor Dunseth isn't taking part because Thank she didn't you. hear the presentation. Yeah. Councillor Nick Ireland. Against Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Louis O'Leary. You're on mute, Councillor O'Leary. Oh, sorry, uh, four chairman. Oh, yeah. right. Councillor Kate Weller. Against. Against. OK, Councillor Sarah Williams. Abstain. Abstained. And Councillor John Worth. Uh, four chairman. One, two, one, two, one, two. 
two and two. It's me again, isn't it? Chem Chairman, I've 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 recorded um two four mm -hmm. and three against and three abstentions. And Chem and Chairman, you you've not exercised your your first vote, does that make sense? Yeah. So okay. Chairman is still deciding. Yeah, I second it. So yes, that I'm in I'm in favour of the officer's recommendation. So at three three again. Yes, Chairman, that was your initial vote, but as Chairman, you also have a casting vote. I I have voted to accept the officer's recommendation of the uh, of the uh, modification of the planning application on section one oh six agreement dated the twenty fourth of June twenty fifteen. Is that your casting vote, Chairman? That's my casting vote, yes. So that brings the total to four members for the application and three against and three abstentions. Thank you. That concludes that concludes this particular item on the agenda. Right. OK, that concludes the, uh, the applications. I'll now take item six on the agenda. Any urgent items and I've had no prior notification of any items of business which is considered to be urgent and that's pursuant to section 100b 4b of the local government act 1972 so therefore there's no urgent items can I therefore draw this meeting to a close thank you members I draw this I now close the meeting thank you thank you chairman thank you, thank you very much well done, chairman, chairman. Thank you.